Welcome DIYers. Do you have lap siding? Some of it need replacing? A little afraid to do it yourself? Not sure where to get started? Well, that's exactly where I was with Mark. So come along with me and I'll show you how I took this seemingly daunting project, broke it down, made it a fairly simple DIY project that any of you can do also. So the reason I'm replacing it is down here you see these missing areas. I've tried, because I didn't plan on uh, replacing these, I really just did not want to. Um, and I've tried to salvage these, but they're just, they're just rotted. So over here on this side of the house, I'm replacing these three rows. And the reason is, again, I've tried to save this with peel bond, but because of this hose spigot and the water that sprays, because I got these no uh, backflow valves on here when you go shut the water off it sprays water everywhere and over the years it's caused the bottoms of these to rot. So these are the issues that were going through my head when I went to start this project. One, how was I going to tear off the old boards and not ruin the good ones? Next, how was I going to get the old ones off and not tear or rip the tar paper that's underneath? And once I do get them off, what hidden issues was I going to find? Is it something I'm going to be able to fix? Is it something so tore up I can't deal with? Next, how do I ensure the new board that I put up don't rot? And last, and most importantly, is when I do go put these back up, how do I do it in such a way that I hide the nails so that way it looks like it's the original? And if you do screw up, after all it is a DIY project, it's bound to happen. We'll just deal with those issues as they come up also. Oh, at the end of this video, I'll go over the things I'd have done different mistakes I made and how I'd avoid them. That way when you do this, you won't make my mistakes. You'll wind up doing a better job and your project will look even better than mine. Oh, and I'll also have affiliate links to the tools down below. You can go on your shopping spree with and help support the channel. And I'll also have a link to my Etsy store. You can get your DIY merchandise like the shirt I'm wearing, which also helps support the channel. Okay, first thing I need to do to get these uh, signing pieces off is unfortunately I gotta go back through all my screw holes and pull the caulking out and pull the screws out. Um, cut up, cut out my joints. All right, so now all I do is I take my putty knife and I gouge it around where the screw head is, dig under and pull out. On we go. Okay, you can see I got this taken off uh, and actually this wasn't near as hard as I thought it was going to be and I've got the other side and I'll show you how I did it. But a couple things I wanted to show you is A, if you remember uh, back in the video where I was repairing the expansion joints, I put the, well, at least on this side, I, on the bottom, I put this flashing under here and then caulked over it. Well, flashing did well, but what... I didn't realize is I had cut up, what, two more inches that didn't get covered. The other thing I want to show you is uh, there's my bottom plate right there, and here's the tar paper. So at least they put uh, pressure treated on there. You can see how it's really soft and all this black on here. And then if you look at the edge, even though it's painted, you can see I still got exposed, even though I tried to cover it up. Okay, we're on this side of the house and you can see I'm got them numbered. One, two, three, and four. And these are the ones I'm taking out. Uh, and the numbers on, the other numbers on there represent the rough length of them. What we have to do is I have to lift up on this board here and look for the nails. Now this one's kind of stuck down because it's I peel bonded the crap out of this end and it sealed it down. And you can see it's just rotted. And you only want to pry where there's lumber. That's pried loose. I have to be a little careful because of the faucet here. So basically for this board here I have to look under there as to where there's nails. Now if you look by the joints there's going to be one around here. Definitely one here and one on the end, and there's probably one in here. This is where this comes in. The nail's underneath here. I don't want to pull it 
and have this board come out. It's pretty flexible, but I don't want to crack it or pull it away. And two, this is a fixed point and it's going to break stuff if I do. So again, I'm going to go up underneath here. Basically, I lift this up. Nails right there, so I'm going to pry right in here because that's where a two before will be. And nail pulled through, so I'll have to get it after I get this board off. There. That one broke off. So on this, you can see where the nails are, so it's really easy to take them out. So. I know there's a two before here because, well, there's a nail cap. I'm trying to leave that joint intact so you can see the stretchiness of this caulk. I got one still here at the bottom, but you can see that joint stretches a lot. And I got the caulking to here, but again, just like on the other side, I wound up cutting this much higher than that. Another thing to notice, there's a starter strip over here. The other side, no starter strip. Couldn't tell you why. Had no idea. Okay, got everything cleaned off. Went through and found, you can't see the pin marks, but you can probably see these red marks where all the studs are so that I have no question of where to nail. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take my measurements and get my pieces cut to length. And so uh, how I'm gonna do that is, is like right here, I've got a butt joint. I've got a 3 16th inch spacer. Now, I know this is 3 16th because I planed it down to it and I took my calipers and measured it. And so basically, I'm going to put this right against here. And then I got little finish nails that I'm going to put in here, hammer in here, and then I'm going to take my tape off of that. And as far as these are going to be easy, it's when I get to where I got to make a joint, I'll have to show you what I'm going to do there. And the other thing before you get to concerned as far as the spacing here it's roughly i say roughly seven inches because some places it's six and three quarters and somewhere it's seven so uh, i'll show you i made a jig in order to set these on so that uh, when i put these back in it'll have even spacing so i'm going to stick this here real tight i want it tight against there and flush and my finish nails are square now i can hook my tape on here and know that i've got my 3 16 spacing so what i'm gonna do is draw my tape to the center of here i've got my edges marked i can mark the edge i can draw to the center there and then i'll subtract half of that 3 16 which is 3 30 seconds and it sounds like it's gonna be difficult but it's not think of it as a fat 16th. Now we'll do the bottom one. And the bottom one's going to run all the way to the end. And so for that, the end of the house is right here on this red line. So I'm going to take the boards probably to right around that red line. Um, and that's about where they got these at. Okay, there's a seam uh, on this one and there's a board here short board. So what I'm going to do is it's an inch and a half, so I'm going to mark center, just three quarters of an inch. And then I'm going to go forward three thirty seconds. And that's where the edge of my seam will need to be. And I'll take that measurement. Okay. I got my miter station set up here. Um, I've already checked that the factory edges are square. I've also checked that my, uh, crossed here is flat. I've also checked my saw tracks at 90 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I've got these laid out in such a way that I get the most out of every board.
Okay, the moment you've been waiting for. How am I going to prevent these from rotting this time? Well, this right here, peel bond primer. Now, this primer is supposed to be used for, you know, priming, but where paint's going to flake and stuff. But what I found is this stuff has like a glue in it. And uh, when I've painted some, like the ends that I've painted when I did the butt joint or expansion joint repair, I mean, it sealed them up. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to seal these edges are already primed, but I'm going to put the peel bomb primer on the edges, the ends, and the back. And then when that's dry, I'm going to paint it. So if it's painted, hopefully we'll keep it from rotting. Okay, while the boards are drying from the peel bond uh, primer, next it's fixing all these holes. And as I said, some of you may have guessed uh, I'm using window flashing. Well, I call it window flashing, but basically it's the sticky flashing that goes around your windows on the outside to seal them up. Um, and the first thing I'm gonna do is put it on the bottom. Since this side here doesn't have a um, starter strip, this is kind of open to the elements, if you will. And so you might be able to see this faint line right here that I drew. Um, and that it represents the bottom of the board. So I'm going to take, I've already taken this, it was six inches, I cut it down to three inches, and I'm going to stick it right there, just like that, all the way across. And that'll seal this, it'll close up some of this, and I'll come back and basically you got to cut a piece and do this like that. And any nail holes, like right in here, I'm just going to take a little one by one piece, stick over the nail holes, and seal all this up. I'm a little above that line, I don't care, that's fine. I just don't want to be under that line. I just don't want to be below that line. Otherwise this is going to show. And then I'll come back a little block of wood and push this down real good to get it to stick. What I have to be careful of when I'm pushing is where there's no studs because there's no blacking behind here and I'll put my finger right through there if I don't watch it. And I put this little piece of tape here to hold this down I can get it stuck down. Okay, the little detail I'm going to do here is I took these nails and screws out. I'm going to pull this back with some shims and slide that underneath there. And I'm just a little above my line. And you can see that little indent because the top of the pads here and the two before is here for the plate and the siding stops right here yeah it'd be nice if it was down here but the problem is you got to have so much ground clearance before the siding so that's why it's like that let's see here tear the paper there. Down. Just like that. And then I'll take another piece and put it right in there and cover that. I'm getting set up now to spray the 
lap siding that I'm replacing um, with the exterior color of the house. And I'm going to use my Fuji uh, Mini Mite 5 uh, HVLP sprayer to do it. And it's a one quart cup and my filter. Now I've got to thin this a little bit so it'll go through my gun okay. And talking with the people at Sherwin Williams, you can go about 20%. Now they said use water, but I don't want to use water. I'm going to use instead this M1 extender. And then I'm also going to put in this stuff called bug juice. All right, there you have it. Now I went over them twice because I had enough paint in the can and I want to make sure I had a good coat. And then I didn't have a lot of product coming out either. I'm not the best when it comes to spray painting. Uh, when I was a kid, I couldn't spray paint the wall without it running. Patched some of the nail holes already on this side. Um, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this uh, seam here and that one there using uh, this uh, uh, window wrapping. And then I've got the other side of the house needs to be done I'll show you more on these. All I need to do is the top of this crack, tear, whatever you want to say is about here. I'm going to go a little bit above it and this is already covered here so all I'm going to do is go about a half inch below. So take a measurement here. We're going to go nine and a half inches. Now this is an inch and a half wide but I'm going to go ahead and go um, three inches wide so this is good and covered. So the hardest part of this whole thing is going to be getting this peeled and stuck on there. So what I did is I cut a bunch of these inch and a half square. And so you see that's plenty of coverage. And so even there's nails up under here uh, and I do cover those also and you're thinking why are you going to cover these when you're going to put new holes true more than likely I'm going to nail pretty close to where these holes are and it's going to go through here and self seal and that's why I'm doing it so we take it off peel it just like that stick it over the center and rub it on Be careful of your edges where there's no lumber so you don't put your finger through it. Finally, it's time to nail these siding boards up. If you happen to have somebody can help you with this, it'll be a lot faster and easier. In my case, I didn't. So we start at the bottom. I've got some old trim boards that I'm using to hold up the far end. I've got a two before to hold up this end. I've got a wooden spacer block that's 3 16ths of an inch thick for my butt joints. I'm using my ball stitch framing nailer and a four foot level. And I use the level to make sure that the bottoms at the butt joint are even. I make sure it's pulled down and tight against the butt joint before I start nailing. And you'll see me adjust my nail settings because it's not driving quite the depth I want. I want them to drive about a sixteenth of an inch below the surface of the board. And I'm nailing about an inch down from the top of the board. Now I'm using hot dip galvanized two and three eighths inch ring shank nails to do all this. On the boards up above, I do have markings where each stud is, and I'm going through and making sure there's a nail at each one of those markings. And for those nails that didn't get driven uh, all the way like I wanted, I'm just taking a nail punch and my hammer and driving all those in to the depth that I want. And it's that easy. It's just rinse and repeat. Set my spacer boards up, get my new piece of siding, and you wanna make sure that your joints, your butt joints, land on a stud so you have something to nail to. Use my spacer block to set the spacing. I do have a red chalk line you can't see on the foundation down there that I also use as a reference to know where the bottom of the board goes along with the level that I was using. And then it's just, once you get that all set, it's just nail them in. Now for the next row, it's a little bit harder, but I put it up underneath there, use that to kind of help hold along with that two before, and I got another two before that's holding it up. And I made 
a spacer jig that's about seven inches um, so that when I put these up, I use that to space the boards so that it all looks even as it did before I took it off. And I actually use that jig to hold the board up in place before I start nailing. And again, you want to make sure you're good and tight against your spacer block. When I nail this part, I'm turning the gun sideways and pushing it up as tight as I can against the bottom of that board and actually tilting the gun up just a little bit before I drive the nail. I'm trying to get the nail up underneath there as best I can so it's hidden and not seen. And at the end of this, we'll show you a finish of it and you'll see that it did a pretty good job and it's hard to find those nails unless you know where you're really looking. Now for this next piece, we're coming to the end at a corner you want to make sure that when you get to the corner of your board that the bottom of the corner you're putting up matches the bottom of the corner board on the opposite side of the house. Use my spacer block and later I'll show you where I kind of screwed that up and didn't quite do it. And I'm using my spacing jig to hold it up, put the nail gun up as high as I can to dry the nails and voila, it's all done. Pretty simple, pretty easy. All right, as you can see, we got this project all done. Even got the corner trim on, which will be another video coming up. But, you know, looking back on this after it's all done, it really wasn't that difficult. And here in a minute, I'm going to give you a couple tips uh, to make it easier for you to do so that when you do it, it turns out even better than my project did. So, but first, let me give you kind of a rundown real quick on how I did the caulking of these joints and over the nails. So when I went to do these joints, basically I took just plain old masking tape like this, put it down each side, like that. Took my trusty caulking gun, put some caulking in there, took my little putty knife, and just wiped it down real flat. Peeled the tape off, voila, perfect little joint. All right, now how did I get these perfect little caulking circles? Well, real easily. I took the same masking tape and I tore off an oh, inch and a half strips, a bunch of them, put them on top of each other. Took a 5 16 inch punch, punched a hole in the center of the tape, and then put the tape over the screw head or the nail head. Took my handy little caulking gun, put some caulking in there. Took my putty knife, done. Now some of you are thinking that's a lot of work. Not really. So if you're going to do this well, I mean, yeah, you can just put some caulk in there and do this and be done, you know, in two seconds. But the problem is when you do that, you're wiping caulking into your texture. And so you're going to have to take a rag, come around and get all that out, risk not going over it and screwing it up and having to put more. So by the time you do all that, I don't think it's any more time than the method I did. Now I did try another method that really wasn't any better or any faster than this tape method I used and that was as I put some caulking on there and a wet finger and try and blend it in and clean it off around here and make it look all blended. By the time I did that, that actually took more time than the tape method. So you give it a try. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. All right, let's talk about what I would do different and how this is going to benefit you and your project. And the biggest tip I can give you is get somebody to help you. That's right. Have a partner help you hang this siding. It's gonna make it go faster and you're gonna avoid most all the mistakes that I make. Okay, first mistake that having a buddy is gonna help you avoid is your spacing. As you can see here, this spacing is wider than like this one or this one here. And the reason is, is when I use my 3 16 inch spacer and put it in here, I didn't get this butted up tight enough before I started nailing down there. And that's where if you had somebody holding this in while you're at that end, they can make sure that they're holding this tight against your spacer and you have nice, even 3 16 inch spacer marks. The other mistake you're gonna avoid if you have somebody helping you put this up is this stair step right here. You see where the bottom of this isn't matching the bottom of this board here. So if you had somebody at this end, they could hold and make sure that these bottoms are straight across and level with each other. It wouldn't really matter if this spacing is off a little bit from here. The eye goes towards it's not even. So I'm hoping with a little paint, uh, once this is all painted, that won't be quite as noticeable. But again, if you had a partner, you'd avoid that mistake. And the next mistake um, 
that I made that I don't know as a partner would help you, but it might. And that is you want to make sure that the bottom of this piece or this piece or this piece at the end matches the bottom of the corresponding side and that they're level. Now that I pointed this out, you might be able to tell that this spacing here is just a little wider than it should be. But once it's painted, I don't think you'll know the difference. And two, with this trim on here, you can actually see that the two corners don't match. And the last tip has to do with the jig that I made. Now, I didn't have that much siding to do, but if you've got more than what I have or like a whole house, it would be worth uh, investing in the little clamps or brackets that they have that uh, slide up underneath the siding and you can set the depth of whatever you want and then your next new piece sits on top of them and it actually holds it up there so you can nail it and actually do it by yourself. But for what little I had to do, it wasn't worth that 60, 70, 80 bucks for the investment. So I made a jig. But what I did wrong was, is when I put the jig on here, I used it to hold up the piece I was nailing against here versus what it should have been was it should have been down here and resting on this piece when I nailed and you can see them off just a little bit. Just kind of semantics, but if you do it this way, just remember your jig needs to hold the piece you're nailing, not hold the piece you're nailing with it. Now for a final little wrap up here, um, you know, for me, to me, this project turned out really, really well. This is the first time I've ever hung lap siding or had to replace it like this. You know, and if you've done this before uh, on your own house, leave me a comment down below. Let me know how yours went. Did you make some of the mistakes I did or did yours turn out even better than mine? If, or if you're getting ready to do this project after you've seen this video, leave me a comment. How did it go? Did it help you not make the mistakes that I did with the spacing and the bottoms here and the corners and all that? But the thing to remember is, is these are at the bottom. And so when you're looking at a house, you're looking at the center portions. Your eye is just drawn to the center portion. So with this being down here, you're really not gonna notice. In fact, from right here, you can't see that there's nails right at the bottom of this piece where they probably shouldn't be. Now everybody's expecting nails to be here, but they're not expecting them to be here. They're gonna be hidden. So I get, oh, what's that? four, four or five feet out, knowing where to look, I can start to see these nails. But once it's painted, I don't think you'll be able to see a thing. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like watching my DIY projects and seeing what I screw up and how I fix it and how you can avoid those on your project, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification down below. That way you're notified when my next video comes out. And until then, happy DIYing.